What is the difference between a rotary and a roundabout? What is a crawler? Is it true that casinos pump oxygen through the air? We have received a lot of questions from you in recent weeks, and we're gonna answer some of them right now. Ryan Newfell from Milford asks, what is the difference between a rotary and a roundabout? Well, Ryan, it's a difference of size and speed. Rotaries tend to be larger, you're allowed to drive more quickly around them, and they usually have more than one lane. Alternatively, roundabouts are smaller, you must drive around them slower, and they are single lane. Now there's more than 100 rotaries here in Massachusetts, but that is changing. State and municipalities are trying to convert as many of those rotaries as they can to roundabouts because, not surprisingly, roundabouts are safer. An anonymous curiosity seeker from Lowell asks, is it true that casinos pump oxygen through the air? And if it's not true, where did the rumor come from? Well, it is indeed an urban myth. And for clarity, we reached out to our local casino, Encore, and they responded with a statement. Here's what they had to say. It is believed that this urban legend comes from Mario Puzo's novel, Fools Die, where a casino owner who owns a fictitious hotel in Las Vegas pumped oxygen into the casino in order to keep gamblers awake and spending for longer. This is absolutely not true of real life casinos. In fact, as an accelerant, it would be highly dangerous to pump oxygen into any space as it could cause a fire to spread rapidly since the flammability of the air would be increased. Elizabeth Warrior from Cambridge, Massachusetts asks, do people who have beards retain more germs on their faces than people who do not? Well, Elizabeth, studies on this very topic have been published in places like European Radiology and the Journal of Hospital Infections. And the conclusion is that, yes, people who have beards retain germs on their faces. But so do people who don't have beards. And in fact, the amount of germs, about the same. Question from John Tobin in Charlestown, AKA our producer's dad. What is a crawler? What is its history? And why is it disappearing? Well, John, when we talk about the crawler, we have to make a distinction. There is the French crawler, and then there is the German slash Dutch crawler. Now, some sources will tell you that the crawler was introduced here in America by the Pennsylvania Dutch, who are in fact German. Other sources say that the actual Dutch brought the crawler here to America, which would make sense since that word crawler is from a Dutch word, which means curl. Either way, they soared in popularity in the 1800s in and around Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and of course remain popular today. Now the big difference between these crawlers is the dough. So the German Dutch version is a little bit more like a traditional donut dough, and their shape is kind of longer and less twisty. The French version is round and is made of a shoe pastry. As for your question about why they are disappearing, I have it on good authority that if they are disappearing around you, it is probably because you are eating them all. In fact, we see no evidence whatsoever that they are disappearing. An influential chef from Dew's Donuts in Brooklyn named Chef Wiley Dufresne just a few years ago said that crawlers were having a moment. And on a personal note, I was able to, with no problems whatsoever, get my hands on a French crawler at my local Dunkin' Donuts this morning. Mmm. And now I am gonna have a personal moment with my crawler. The Curiosity Desk is sponsored by Emerson College, inspiring curiosity and creative expression in all of us.